Cool. Quite a full room in here. Thanks a lot, guys, for coming. Let me just put my timer here so I don't speak too long. There's a lot of stuff we want to cover here. All right, cool. So, yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for, for coming to today's talk. My name is Hilma. I'm one of the, the founders of uh, Gelato. And today I want to talk to you about smart contract automation, how to automate certain transactions that you want to send to Ethereum or any other EVM-based compatible networks. And if you want to maybe uh, automate certain functionalities within your applications that you might be building over the week to come. And yeah, how you could use something like Gelato to do that and how smart contract automation works and what automation means and why you need something like Gelato actually to facilitate it on your behalf. So, as in kind of like an example smart contract right here, what, what we what we have is you don't need to kind of like dig into the code here, but what you can imagine this to be is just like a smart contract where you just deposit some funds, let's say some 1,000 USDC, and let's say, if you, let's say you have five children and you want to send them their lunch money every day at like uh, lunchtime so they don't get everything at once, they don't go out and spend it on candy and stuff, they only get like every day $10 to buy them some lunch, right? Um, and there's this token in the smart contract that facilitates that, which is this pay out token function right here, and what it does, it just sends a fixed amount of tokens to some receivers that you can think about being your children, for example, in this case. Uh, but obviously, you don't want to kind of like go there and, and manually execute that particular function. You want that function to be automatically triggered every day at 12 noon, for example, to pay your children their lunch money, right? And so today we will talk about, okay, how we can facilitate that and why this doesn't work out of the box with Ethereum or EVM-based compatible networks. So the, the first realization you have to kind of like uh, have when you develop a dApp or you develop smart contracts is they're actually not smart. They're pretty lazy. The only thing what they do is they just have certain logic and certain, certain state encoded in them. And the logic basically defining how the state uh, of this particular smart contract can change when you call a particular function, right? But the problem is if no one executes that particular function on the smart contract, then this logic and the state changes associated with them will actually never occur. They will never trigger. So you always need a party sending a transaction and then the lunch money will be sent. If, if, if no one sends a transaction, nothing will happen in Ethereum, right? And yeah, so the problem here is that smart contracts, they don't self-execute -ex or they don't conditionally execute. You can't say, hey, I want to execute it, not now, but in the future based on certain conditions that you might want to define, which can be arbitrary ones, right? So yeah, wh why doesn't uh, Ethereum support this out of the box? You might have heard about something like cron jobs on, on Linux or something. Um, or with Web2 uh, so, uh, services, you kind of like maybe um, you, you, you know how to schedule something in the future, but on Ethereum, this is actually not that straightforward because um, like if you think about native, natively automating stuff, uh, automation is kind of like a for loop that just runs forever and just constantly checks if certain conditions are met, but you can't have these for loops within smart contracts, right? Because uh, smart contract, like transactions are always like executed right after each other. You can only have one after another after another. And if you have one transaction that might execute some logic which just runs forever, then no other transaction will ever get into Ethereum again, right? So the network kind of like is stuck and it will break. So that's why you have something like gas limits that you have to define prior to actually sending a transaction. You say, okay, my function can consume 200,000 gas units which equal the computational units on um, on the EVM, and you cannot you cannot um, consume more than that. So um, yeah, that's why you can't have these native for loops or like infinite loops within smart contracts itself. And so what you have to do is you have to automate smart contracts um, exogenous to the EVM, so outside of the EVM. Um, and the first question is, okay, why don't like the Ethereum clients do that, right? Why don't we all run full nodes, or why don't the miners just do it on your behalf, right? But yeah, it's uh, quite computational um, expensive to actually do that, right? Uh, you, if, you, if you don't think about like one task or, or one job, but you think about like 50 or 100 or 50,000 jobs that have to be checked every block, every couple of seconds, this will increase the computational 
um, um, requirements that these fall nodes have to have to have, right? And this means that you have to have beefier servers. That means only a few people can actually afford running them. That means Ethereum will become more and more centralized. So that's why if you build like clients or if you build clients for Ethereum, for example, you want to kind of like offload a lot of the computational complexities to other services. For example, like Flashbots is a, is a good example. There, um, all these bundles that are formed are actually done by like a external party by these searchers, and then they bundle it up, they submit it to the network, and then you can go on, uh, and then the miners just get the bundle of transactions they can get it mined. So basically, this conditional recurring transactions, they have to be done uh, outside, off-chain, by an external network, right? Or by an external entity, so to say. Yeah, so in like the Web2 or operating system world, you are used to these cron drops, or if you use like cloud-based job schedulers, you know stuff like AWS CloudWatch, or then you combine it with Lambda functions, you combine it with a couple of APIs, and you can kind of like build yourself a, an automative, um, an, an automation feature, so to say, for example, like send a Telegram notification every 12 hours to your users with a summary of their recent activity, for example, right? And so the question is, can we use these services to also automate smart contracts? And uh, yes, you could. You, you could do that. But it turns out it's like pretty cumbersome and pretty complex and there's a lot of overhead to actually do that. Now, if you want to build an application or like just that I had before, you want to send lunch money to your to children every, 12 hour, every 24 hours, right? Then I think uh, it's pretty straightforward and you would actually be able to pull this off. But if you talk about building a reliable and scalable decentralized application, where you might have like 10,000s of these tasks running all the time, there you really shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't do that. Um, and so yeah, here are just like a, a couple of examples of that, you, um, that you need to consider when actually building such a thing. You need to be able to listen to events, you need to check every block if something becomes executable, you need to monitor, uh, basically you will then be able, you will be the party that will execute these transactions at the right time, so you have to monitor the balance of your, um, of your, of your, of your externally owned accounts that will then send the transactions. You will have to send yourself alerts when these balances go too low, you have to kind of like catch reorgs on Ethereum, right? You might think your transaction got mined, but maybe there's a reorg three, three blocks down the road, and your transaction actually doesn't, didn't get mined, right? You need to kind of like realize that and then send it again. There are all these edge cases, um, and yeah, you have to deal with RPC, unresponsiveness. RPCs are like Infura, Alchemy, or you running your phone node if you want to connect and get information from the chain or send transactions to it, right? And if the one you're using goes down, then you basically cannot connect. I think Meta Infura had an issue a couple of days ago, and literally no one was able to send a transaction to Ethereum anymore, right? And if your dApp relies on you sending a transaction at a certain time, you're in trouble. And kind of like this whole complexity goes exponentially higher if you think about multi-chain, if you not only have to run one client for Ethereum, but then you have to, your dApp is maybe on Ethereum, Polygon, Phantom, Avalanche, Optimism, right? Then you kind of like have to run four or five instances. These RPCs are even more unreliable than um, the ones on Ethereum, which are kind, kind of mature by now. So yeah, the, the complexity just goes, goes higher with that. And then there's smaller things like defining optimal gas prices, resubmitting transactions when they're stuck, because when they're stuck, and then you have five other transactions to send, they, may, they might not get mined because the, the one previously uses a nonce that is lower than the one you're now using, and so it's stuck, you need to unstuck it, resubmit it. And then there's the whole thing about secure private key management, which is a complete rabbit hole to go into as well. So yeah, if you want to build like a scalable application, then this is, probably not the best idea. So why? Because it's very time intensive, right? You need like an own team around the whole thing in order to build it scalable. Um, and you don't want that, right? So you as a de dApp developer, you want to build your dApp, you want to focus on that, and you want to outsource everything else that is not related to like the specific user experience of the people using your product. And really to make this really 100% reliable is hard. Um, yeah, and so yeah, and especially if you go multi-chain, so and one important thing as well is if you're building a decentralized application and relies on certain parties executing transactions conditionally and at certain times in the future, and you're the only one running it, let's say your system goes down or you forgot to pay your AWS bill or you run out of ease or whatever, no one will execute it anymore, right? It's, it's down. So your decentralized application relies on the notion of your particular one party running uh, this client. And if it goes down, then the, the app goes down, right? So you, you would like to do this in a more decentralized way, having multiple node operators actually do that. So what our hypothesis is, is you basically need this 
native web free job scheduling solution that what we had allowed to build for the past couple of years. And yeah, this is kind of like how it looks like from an architecture perspective, very high level. And there's this layer on Ethereum or on these networks, which is the top one where you have smart contracts. And then you have this middle layer, which is basically, okay, how do I communicate the information with the various networks like Ethereum? And then there's the kind of client side of the whole thing, the, the clients that the Gelato operators run. Um, and there are certain services that do certain parts, right? You have these job schedulers um, uh, on chain, which is a smart contract, which has several functions. And then you can define arbitrary sort of tasks that they, uh, these Gelato bots should monitor and then execute in certain, uh, based on certain conditions. And these conditions can be defined in the resolver contracts, where you can, for example, say, hey, when the interest rate from compound has changed to the one on Aave, I, I would like to execute a credit or loan refinancing transaction that refinances my loan to this protocol, right? Uh, in this case, this smart contract that has this refinancing logic will be the target smart contract, the top right one, and the one defining when the interest rate has changed accordingly will be the resolver one. So um, yeah, put resolver and target together, you can like, have to encode the payload and you submit it to the job, job scheduler smart contract and now uh, Gelato kind of like knows um, that you want to have this automated, right? And then on the Gelato client side, there's this event listener service that listens to these events and say, okay, I know now that I should execute this refinance logic for this particular user. And the checker part is in the back end, basically the part that basically constantly checks the smart contract and verifies, okay, can I do the refinancing now? No, I can't. And then the next block, can I do it now? No, I can't. And it basically goes on like that. And once it gets returned that it should execute this refinancing transaction, the executor part of the thing will basically get it mined reliably on any network that was specified. Yeah, and then the benefits are probably quite obvious. Um, it's basically serverless, right? So for me, decentralized applications also means like the next generation of serverless applications. You literally put your front end on IPFS, you put your smart contracts on Ethereum, you run your, um, um, you do your automation with Gelato and you can basically build applications, put them online and you don't have to run anything and they could be transferring millions of dollars every day. And this is usually how smart contracts work. Right? I mean, this is what, what the power is. So. It's completely serverless. Um, you don't have to deal with multiple RPCs like we are, like this. The, the bots aggregate everything um, under the hood. They get transactions mined reliably, fast, cheap. Constantly resubmit to get them in. They can deal with all these sort of edge cases that come with like RPC re unresponsiveness or reorgs that happen. And then yeah, multi-chain works out of the box. No single point of failure. There are multiple multiple um, bots running. Um, and then you don't need to worry about private key management in the cloud, which is again super dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And then uh, yeah, there's a coordination layer in between. So if you if you then decide to run multiple instances of your bots, they will probably start colliding with each other and racing each other, and one gets mined, the others won't, and all of them will have to pay transaction fees. But you only execute the logic once, um, and so you would you want kind of like a coordination layer in between that says, okay, please now you're the one executing, you're the one executing like. On ETH2, where, ETH2 where you have validators and they have certain slots allocated to them and then they validate the block. Um, yeah, so this is kind of like an overview of the, the kind of like architecture of the network itself. And then what we have done is we, we've taken the liberty to build a couple of applications on top of that um, or certain isolated certain parts of this whole thing and made it av available for developers to use uh, to kind of like either showcase what you can do with it or to, to, to kind of like focus on particular other use cases that you can use this infrastructure network for. And uh, those are GUNI, Gelato Ops, and our new multi-chain relay API that I will talk about in a bit and I will just like very briefly touch upon all of them. Now Gelato Ops is a very cool interface where you can just go to, you paste in the contract address that you have, you select a function you want to automate, like harvest this vault, you paste in the vault address, and then you define when you want to execute it. You can just say, hey, this I want to call it every, th every three days, or I want to have like a, a, a custom resolver logic that defines how you can execute it, right? And then you just click on create task, the task is submitted, the bots will pick it up, and they will just start uh, running it and executing the logic. And you don't, even, you don't even have to talk to us or ask permission or something, just go there, create the task. Um, you can deposit some ETH or some Matic on, on, on Polygon or whatever, and then you're done. Yeah, this is how it looks. 
And here just like a couple of uh, examples of jobs other developers have created. And if you go to app.schlafenor.network, there's this leaderboard where you can see all of the, the kind of like jobs and tasks that have been created and what they do and uh, how many transactions they have and stuff. And you can kind of like compete against each other there and like just some, some cool use cases that other projects have used. Let's say you are building an algorithmic stable coin, right? An algorithmic stable coin wants to always uh, retain this $1 pack with it, right? And it, it does so by having some sort of oracle and if the price of this particular asset moves uh, above or below a dollar, it needs to rebase the currency, so to say, by issuing more of it or burning some of it and this should then in theory put it back to this $1 mark. And this is basically just like a function that has to be called like every couple of minutes or every hour, depending on the network and the transaction fees associated with it. And this, like, there are a lot of projects on, on, on Phantom and everywhere where basically people just go there, they, they, they automate the rebasing and it happens. Other things are like harvesting of vaults or compounding fees. If you, if you need to co um, constantly compound the fees of your vaults um, on a daily basis or just when the fees are sufficient to actually make it worthwhile paying for the transaction, you can easily do it. Uh, then some of um, some of uh, node oper so some of various node operators they always need to have ETH ETH balances um, topped up in various accounts and you can basically use Gelato to monitor these balances and then top them up accordingly. Um, then yeah, MakerDAO for example uh, uses this to update uh, debt ceilings um, for uh, for their uh, for their vaults. And, and then you have like funny ones, not only DeFi related ones, but say you, you might know Avagotchi, they're these NFTs, you can pet them and there are people building applications where uh, you automate the petting of your Avagotchi every eight hours. I don't know what the, what's the reason behind that, but maybe it, it makes these NFTs uh, worth more in the future, right? But this is the sort of thing that you can just, rather than click it yourself every eight hours or automate it and then I know some people build applications that distribute convex rewards or Olympus Pro is a cool one there you can uh, basically uh, bond and, and, and get uh, and buy tokens at a discount in a week from now by just bonding right today and this kind of like redeeming on the of the bond in a week from now you can just automate with Gelato so you don't even have to do it especially if you do like multiple ones you might not want to do it every single time and then other ones like claiming synthetic staking rewards every now right every now and so often so yeah this has got like a bunch of stuff people build today and, and what we recently re, um, released which is also super cool is our multi-chain relay API that is already used in production today by, by a couple of applications and what it does is basically just let's say you're a developer and you have some sort of notion of, of wanting to programmatically get transaction mined in certain times uh, and in certain places and especially if you want to go multi-chain um, and you don't want to do it like kind of like recurringly or dif you don't want to do deferred transactions so like these conditional transactions but you just want to do it instantaneously right now um, then this is really something you should check out um, the, 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 the most kind of like most known use cases gasless transactions so if you build a dApp you don't want your users to hold ETH or, or some other network token on the network you're building then you can just use um, this API can define a chain ID um, and maybe your app is available on like five different networks, right? Um, you can just define a chain ID and um, get the transactions mined on behalf of the user without them actually having to pay for the transaction. They just sign the message. And the cool thing here is, like right now, when you build multi multi chain applications, you you always like let's say you, they are it's available on on Phantom and if you remain it or whatever, the users always have to like change the network in between and then, yeah, sorry, please connect to this network. Yeah, sorry, you need to change it again to this one, right? And the UX is pretty bad. But like if you really build your application with meta transactions in mind, then you don't even have to ask them to change the network anymore. You can just like let them sign the message and Gelato will relay the transactions on the right network on your behalf. So they don't even know what network they need to connect to. They just like are connected to any network and it just works out of the box. But in order to use that for meta transactions, you, you smart contracts need to support them, and there's a lot of uh, resources out there that will help you uh, do that, right? Yeah, the cool thing here is you can pay with like any ERC20 tokens instead of ETH, like Dai, USDC, um, and yeah. So games is a cool uh, use case for that, or also uh, bridges because bridges always need to get transactions mined on all these networks, right? Um, and so yeah, this this is some of them are using um, this multi-chain API. Cool. This is kind of like how, how the, it's just like a very simple API you can use. Um, and the docs will be released pretty soon, maybe over the weekend. Yeah, and then uh, this is an example, a really cool one of an application that we actually built internally. 
on top of Gelato, and this is basically an automated liquidity management solution for Uniswap v3, um, which is super cool because it basically, Uniswap v3, you have to always put your money and your liquidity in certain ranges, and when the price moves, you're out of range, you're not earning fees, and so what this service does, it allows managers to come in and put automated strategies on top where the um, where rebalancing happens uh, based on certain conditions that they define and they can just auto automate the rebalancing of liquidity to always be kind of like around the current price. And uh, this was just like a, a kind of like a use case we built, but right now in GUni we have over 10% of Uniswap V3's total TVL already in there, over 28% of Uniswap V3's total TVL on Optimism are in there. And yeah, so a lot of projects are actually using it today to make liquidity mining schemes work on Uniswap v3, for example, because it also makes it fungible, so you don't have to worry about all the, any of that NFT stuff that's just very complex. Yeah, this is like a, just like a, a snapshot of some of the projects using us today uh, for all these certain type of applications, so you're in good company if you want to check it out. And yeah, that's, I think I'm over the 20 minutes already, that's it, connect with us. If you need help with like automating something this weekend or this week, just hit me up. We have some other guys from Gelato in the back, Ari and Weston. You can we wave, you can uh, ask them anything as well. And yeah, that's it, thanks. <laughs>